It's the 21st century and we're all about inclusivity. Who says communication should only be verbal? In this context, however, we're talking about communicating with your feline friend by reading their body language. I guess you could call these signs their tell-tale signs. Here's your cat's body language finally explained. Number 10, lounging. How would you be able to tell if your cat is comfortable in its surroundings? Cat owners, new and old, can all agree on the fact that felines are notorious for giving off the least clues when it comes to expressing comfort or discomfort. This question becomes a lot more prudent when you're trying to introduce your cat to new surroundings. For example, you switched around the living room furniture and your cat's favorite pillow is now in another corner. How can you tell if your cat gives it a paw up or a paw down? Easy, you look for signs that would indicate it's lounging in its surroundings. These signs include lying down in a flat state or curled in a ball with its paws underneath, eyes half closed, whiskers relaxed, and ears relaxed. Your cat's ears might stand upright depending on whether or not someone's talking, the television is on, and so forth. However, the comfortable position with their legs intertwined and their front paws beneath their body is usually indicative of comfort. Number 9. Alert Cats are known for many things, and being good hunters is probably on the top of that list. Of all the domestic animals there are, cats are known for being the most focused. They probably picked up that trait from their ancestors. If your feline friend is focused on something, you'll notice their ears and whiskers stand upright. Their body is usually arched at the back and their pupils are narrowed. Another sign is their tail position. If their tail is swishing from left to right in a seemingly calm, calculated motion, you know they're ready to find the right time to pounce. It's best to leave your cat be when it appears to be focused, unless it's fixated on something it shouldn't be. If you disturb your pet while it's trying to focus on something, it'll probably get annoyed. Number 8. Content What's the main difference between a pet parent and a pet owner? Well, a pet parent tries to study when and how to make its pet happy. A pet owner doesn't really care. Be a pet parent. You also have the added responsibility of trying to alleviate any triggers in your pet's surroundings. Your pet doesn't have the luxury of opposable thumbs and can't verbally tell you that there's something making it uncomfortable, unless you speak meow. What would you do then? You look for signs that your pet is happy and content. For example, when your pet is sitting upright, it'll have its ears, tail, and whiskers relaxed and will probably purr lovingly if you pet it. Similarly, it'll lie with its paws beneath its body and have its eyes closed or semi-closed. Number 7. Anxious What would a human do if he or she was anxious? They'd probably fidget. A cat does the same. If you notice your feline is moving its tail from right to left in a calculated manner, with its back arched downwards and its ears lowered, then there's probably something in your cat's surroundings that's making it uncomfortable. As a pet parent, it's your responsibility to recognize the signs and alleviate them as soon as possible. You need to be able to study up on and then identify your cat's body language. Yeah, there's a language barrier, but you should be able to identify the state your pet is in when it's comfortable as opposed to when it's not. Number 6. Afraid You've heard the phrase, scaredy cat, but have you ever seen one? If your cat is fearful of something in its surroundings, or if there's something causing it distress, then it'll assume the stereotypical scaredy cat position. What is it? Your cat will have its back arched up, paws spread, claws out, hissing, and will probably have dilated or blistering pupils. Your cat is afraid of something and is trying to get your attention. Luckily, a scared cat is also the most expressive of the lot. It'll come up to you, someone the pet sees as a protector, and try to gain your attention. If you've been keeping up with your cat body language, you'll quickly be able to recognize that they're in need of help. Number 5. Frustration There's this stereotypical notion that cats are always angry. If you've ever had a cat for a pet, you'd know that this is a grossly inaccurate statement about what could only be described as one of the most loving animals in the world. But do they get angry and frustrated? 
Oh, they sure do. Your cat is prone to getting annoyed and frustrated at you every once in a while. They'll try to get your attention by hissing, standing upright, ears and tail flexed, and whiskers upright. A frustrated cat is different from an angry one. Angry cats are a lot more aggressive and won't respond kindly to you trying to pet them while they're busy trying to be mad at you. Number four, angry. Moving on to everyone's stereotype of cats, the grumpy cat. Angry cats are perhaps the easiest to identify because their facial expressions are often curved in such a way that it's pretty obvious you piss them off. An angry cat will be rigid, with its tail held up stiff and straight or curled around and under their body. They will act very differently from usual. They could be silent, hissing, spitting, or growling. Since cats tend to follow in their ancestral traits and footsteps, or paw prints in this case, they'll try to assume the most threatening position they can when they're angry. Again, an angry cat won't take kindly to a well-meaning pet parent who either thinks the animal looks adorable when it's mad or trying to hug away the anger. Best alleviate the situation or trigger or leave them be. Number three, relaxed. If your cat is ready for bedtime, has just had a hearty meal, or is overall in a pretty good mood, it'll show this emotion by relaxing all of its body at once. You've guessed it, it's the stretched out cat pose. With their front paws lying in front, their back arched up, and their hind paws raised a little above, it's pretty easy to spot a cat that's all relaxed. It's a lot like a yoga pose. It releases happy hormones and your cat can't seem to get enough of this stretch. Number two, greetings. Meow can mean practically anything, but experts think it's most commonly used as either a sign of attention or a greeting. You'd notice that when two cats cross paths with one another, they'll usually meow at one another. What else would they do? They'd probably wrap their tails around one another. Cats can often give off a lot of details with their tails, something experts call their tail language. If your cat is greeting a fellow feline or you, it'll probably raise its tail up with the tip bent ever so slightly like a question mark. Once the cat makes its way towards you, it'll wrap its tail around your leg. This is also a sign of comfort and adoration. Number one, kneading. When was the last time you saw your cat kneading? Probably when it was a kitten and needed its mother for milk. When a cat raises its paws up and down, it's kneading, and this is usually a sign of comfort. Does an adult cat need to? Yes. Adult cats usually need pillows or something that gives off their pet parent scent. They'll do so to familiarize themselves with the object probably to lounge on it or sleep on it for later. Kneading is done usually in an affectionate manner. Your cat is trying to make something that reminds it of you into a place that it can relax on for later. So, is there something unique your feline friend does that tells you about their emotions? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Inforama for more pet-related content. We'll see you on the next one.